Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and what we want to do tonight is introduce a project um, that the city is um, very excited about and very interested in doing. And what we wanted to do is introduce the concept to the neighborhood tonight. Um, many of you, did um, everyone in here receive a letter from our department, the Department of Water Resources, about the meeting tonight or in the press release? So what we want to do is we'll go over the, the concept of the project, and we can see there are some boards on either side. Um, these are kind of some blow up of some very preliminary plans um, that we have. Our consulting engineer um, is here. Uh, Don Rissmeyer is here, and Joe I was say Howard. I was going to say Brown. I knew that wasn't right. My apologies, Joe. I'll get it right next time. Uh, but these are our consulting engineers from A. Morton Thomas, or AMT um, Engineering. Um, they've been the ones out in the field doing survey, if you've seen anybody out in the past few months doing some survey work, um, looking at the stream channel that's down through there, and also doing a tree survey as well in the entire project area. Um, we also have tonight our project manager, Whitney Blankenship. She, she's in the back of the room. Uh, she is going to be the project manager through construction. And I am Erin Hawkins. I'm a water quality manager with the city of Lynchburg, and we're all part of the, the Department of Water Resources. A couple other folks that are with us tonight, one of the gentlemen standing at the door helping people in is Chris Geyerson. He is our outreach coordinator. Hey, Chris, back there in the back. Um, and then one of the other ladies that's outside, Jess Gearing, she is our PR person for our department now. Um, so we wanted to have the meeting tonight to one, like I said, introduce the topic um, in this project for the, the neighborhood and the community and give you a little bit more background as to why, what got us to this point. And so um, the project area and the um, information that you may have received, it kind of showed a map of the area and what we're looking at doing well, let's back up for a second. Our agenda for this evening, um, other than going through the welcome, which we just did, we'll kind of go over the project, let's talk about some of the existing conditions that are in the stream channel, because it really is a poorly, um, it, it's in poor condition and it's been severely eroded over the years from all the storm water that's been gone through it. And looking at some of the proposed conditions, these are gonna be other projects that we've worked on um, or the engineering firms have worked on to show what type of benefits a stream restoration project can give us when we're looking at repairing these degraded streams. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the project schedule and have an open discussion. And this truly is an open discussion. We are um, sincerely interested in your feedback and your comments um, on this project. And as we move forward with this through design, we will be having another public meeting later in the fall. Um, we are at a very early concept design right now, um, commonly about a 30% design. And we will come back later this fall with a more comprehensive set of plans and more complete drawings on the direction that we're going for this particular project. And um, and be able to um, look at the boards, have specific questions for us individually. We'll kind of open up for general discussion. And also feel free to write on these boards. We have post-it notes and markers. If you have a, a comment specific or just general, we'll be happy to try to answer those for you this evening as well. So the project overview, this is phase one of hopefully a two-phase project. Phase one is what we're here specifically to talk about tonight. And that's this area right here um, down, the long, down behind the Kmart Shopping Center and uh, the, the carpet store and some of these smaller businesses right here on Wards Road, looking at this stream channel to where it comes all the way down to Rock Castle Creek. And that is phase one. Of, of a project through here. Phase two, we hope to be able to do one day, is this phase from pre pretty much the expressway here, the expressway at the Wards Road exit, um, to where it comes down through the, the backside of the Sheffield neighborhood all the way down to Ford Avenue. It is our hope that we will be able to do this um, coming behind the sanitary sewer project that's currently going on down through there. We are replacing a, a sanitary sewer line that's down through there. It's a main interceptor. Um, and hopefully uh, we have planned to be able to come back. I say hopefully giving time and funding and everything else that goes with that, um, that we'll be able to come in in a few years and be able to do that stretch of the stream as well. 
Right now, this project, just this portion of it right here, um, is about a $2 million project, a $2 million project. Um, and we have been very fortunate, the city has. Um, we have been awarded a 50% matching grant of that um, from the state. And then we were able to secure a, um, a VRA loan or a stormwater loan through uh, the state. And these, um, the grant and the loan are both through the Department of Environmental Quality. Um, the Water Resources Department are very familiar with these types of grants and loans. We have um, received a lot of these loans over the years for our CSO separation projects. And so this is a, con a continuation of our financing options to be able to afford these types of, of water quality improvement projects. So with the 50% uh, grant and then with the loan. This is about a $2 million project. That includes design cost and um, everything that goes in with that, including construction. And so, like I said, this is phase one that we're here to talk about tonight, this drainage area down behind the Kmart Shopping Center and the, the carpet store, and then hopefully a future phase down in this area as well. And I'm going to turn it over to our AMT folks. Um, but when I wanted to give a quick um, mention as to why this project is so important to us. Um, one of the many things that the city is, is interested in improving is our water quality. And um, we also have a lot of infrastructure um, that we have to maintain, um, including our roads, all the stormwater drainage infrastructure that goes with that, our inlets, our pipes, our outfalls. This particular stream, um, takes a very large uh, drainage area, pretty much the Wards Road, the Taco Bell, the, the cluster of um, motels that are right there behind the Exxon Shopping Center, including the Kmart Shopping Center, and some of the, that drainage area comes all the way down through, um, through this area. And so you can see here, this is the Kmart Shopping Center, and so all of this area up through here drains down through there. It's also a highly impervious um, drainage area. In other words, there's a lot of hard surfaces that doesn't allow uh, rainwater to infiltrate into the ground. And what we have seen over the years is the detriment that that causes to our stream corridors. Um, and as you may have seen in your backyards. Um, these are just a couple of the pictures that you'll see tonight of the existing streams channel that's down um, in this project area. This is kind of right at the, the top edge of the parking lot in front of the Northern Tool and Liberty um, Medical Facility that's right there. And this is Old Wards Road that comes right down through here, this right of way behind these businesses. This is part of that drainage area through here. Um, it's hard to tell on scale here, but this, this ditch right here, ditch I'll call it, is more on the long lines of 20 to 25 feet deep and about 15 to 20 feet wide-ish. Um, and so this is the stormwater impact that we've had, all this runoff from this drainage area coming down through here over the years. Um, all that sediment has gotten into our creeks and it has impacted water quality all the way down. Um, Rock Castle Creek. One of their big drivers through this is our Chesapeake Bay TMDL. Um, the city of Lynchburg lies wholly within the Chesapeake Bay watershed, and we all drain to the James River in our neck of the woods here. Um, and so we're, while we're improving local water quality by doing these types of projects, we're ultimately helping the Chesapeake Bay because everything cumulatively going downstream has an impact downstream. So this is part of our Chesapeake Bay TMDL requirements. TMDL is total maximum daily load. It's essentially a pollution diet on nutrients and sediment that get entered into our waterways. And so this project um, will really and very significantly get us towards meeting our, our requirements for our Chesapeake Bay TMDL plan. And with that, I'll turn it over to these folks who are much more knowledgeable and they have been walking the stream, especially Joe, has been walking the stream corridor a whole lot lately um, and kind of walk you through the concept of what we have and where these types of projects have been done elsewhere in other localities. All right. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank everybody for allowing us access to the property. Um, mm -hmm. we, we have had a lot of surveying and engineering folks out there looking at the stream. Um, and basically, Joe's one of those guys that's walked every, every foot of this stream several times. Mm -hmm. And he's going to kind of walk you through our, our slideshow. But I want to thank you on behalf of the company and uh, turn it over to Joe to talk to you specifically about your stream. Well, thank you very much. And 
do want to reiterate that this is a this is an open conversation, and what we have shown here is what we call like a 30% design. This is the preliminary phases of our design concept, and that's the whole reason for meeting with you as the shareholders, as the landowners, whose people whose land abuts the project. Um, we want your input. You know, I want to reiterate, we've got markers, we've got sticky notes. If you're really adamant about that one dogwood in your backyard that we're showing to, to take out, then mark, you know, I want to save this tree or um, things like that. That's really, we want to hear your feedback before we progress further with the design. Um, so just to piggyback off of what Aaron was saying, regarding the existing conditions, it is a highly um, urban watershed. Uh, specifically with all the asphalt and roadway. Um, so we do have a lot of stormwater uh, running off the parking lots. And what we see as a result of that are severely eroded stream banks. And, and a summary of the condition, I would say, is what used to be a nice little creek is now a big gully. Um, and how, how many people have, have peeked over into the gully or the stream? So you know that... Um, it's, it's not a very pretty picture. And in some areas, we've got exposed sewer pipes towards the lower end of the stream. Um, we've got a lot of instability. We've got bamboo. That's an invasive species. Um, and you can see where the bamboo here is sloughing off as those banks kind of fail and fall into the channel. And like I said, that all, all that sediment is pushed downstream into Rock Castle Creek uh, proper, and that affects the water quality in this watershed. Um, so, ultimately, we've got a very degraded stream system, and, and we spent a lot of time, I've spent a lot of time um, studying the existing conditions because, like a doctor would diagnose a problem before he treats it, we have to completely understand how it got to this way before we do a design for restoration. So I'd like to talk about um, natural channel design. Um, you can get stability in a stream restoration project, it would be more of a stream stabilization project by putting in concrete or by putting in riprap. We really don't want to go that direction. We want to utilize a natural channel design approach. Um, we want to mimic nature. Mother Nature knows, knows best, and we're going to try and match, match that kind of design. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the types of features, the types of structures that we propose often in stream restoration. Um, we've got a riffle pool sequence. Um, Pool is just what it sounds like in a stream. Often they, they occur in the bins where you get a little bit of scour. Uh, and a riffle is typically this shallower, steep, steeper area in a stream. It's what makes the pretty noise. It's what we all take pictures of. Um, in streams that have a higher slope, like in the mountains, or if you've got bedrock, you often will find step pools. So in an urban area, often where we don't have a lot of room to propose the stream going left and right, like in some of these areas, we'll propose step pools. Uh, cross veins look like this. They basically look like a V. And the, the purpose of cross veins uh, in many of these is to add stability. Um, the vein is a little bit lower in the middle here than it is on the edges. And what that does is forces the stream power when you get runoff from a rain-producing rain, rain event. Um, it takes a lot of the pressure off of these banks and keeps the stream in the middle of the channel. A J-hook, you can't really see it because it's underwater here, um, but it just looks like this. It's kinda, we call it a J-hook because it just hooks, hooks around. This has the similar um, function to divert power off of this bank and to keep the stream kind of in the middle of the channel. If we're trying to bend the stream left or right, often we can do that just with grating, but sometimes we'll propose a J-hook to make the stream meander the way that we want. And you can see when afterwards, um, and like I said, if there are any questions, pl please ask. Um, we've, we've got a few J-hooks proposed along here. We've got a few cross, cross veins proposed. Um, we also have some log veins proposed down towards the end. Often, um, so we can get vegetation established over the course of a three to five year period, we'll propose uh, toe protection and soil lifts. And basically that's just where we have imbricated, uh, imbricated rock, and that's just a fancy word for more natural rectangular rock that fits into each other really nicely without mortar or grout. Uh, we'll have imbricated toe protection, 
and then soil lifts. And this is what we call uh, soft armoring. So I would much, as a landowner, I would much prefer to see soft armoring, vegetation, grass, and trees uh, versus riprap or stone. Uh, however, if need be, we do sometimes utilize an imbricated, there's that word again, stone wall. So in this case, um, there was a sanitary sewer line running behind that bank that was exposed. So um, instead of utilizing soft protection, we had to have hard rock protection there just to protect our asset. Um, but we do try and make it look as natural as, pro as, as possible. Are there any questions so far about the types of structures we use? And last but not least, um, we have a cascade system. And often we utilize this in an outfall. Um, so instead of just a uh, riprap ditch line, um, potentially conveying the stormwater, we want to get that step, it's like a mini step pool system. So we're going to go through a few before and after pictures. Um, so here's a good example of before stream restoration. We've got trees sloughing off. We've got vertical banks, basically a gully. Uh, and after, after stream restoration, you can see here our riffle pool riffle. And we've braided back the banks, revegetated the area. You can see these tree tubes. Um, we spend a lot of time and effort um, thinking about reestablishing native vegetation populations. So if, if we see a lot of invasives like bamboo, we're going to try and, try and remove those and um, reinstall native plants. Once again, before stream restoration, we got, for this one, we had a lot of eroded banks here. We had bamboo back here. Um, and I, I like this picture because, to me, this one really mirrors um, what our stream could potentially look like. Because if you've been back there, you notice that about half the time the channel is dry. It's, it's what we call a flashy system. Since the watershed is very hard, very impervious, we get a runoff producing event, we get a rain, a gully washer, and the stream fills up really quickly and then it goes back down and then it's dry. So, you know, sometimes just because of stream restoration doesn't mean that um, there's going to be water there at all times. This is a good example of stream bank stabilization. Um, you can see this really sheer vertical bank. We've got trees sloughing off. And then after the fact, we've got toe protection and then vegetation uh, reestablished along that outer bend. Another example of soil lifts with toe protection. Um, with, with this one, we, you see the manhole here, and then you see it there. So we shifted the stream left when you're looking downstream uh, to protect that sanitary sewer asset. So we didn't have to do an imbricated rock wall there. We could use soft, soft armoring, soft vegetative protection. And then once again, imbricated rock walls are warranted at times. And you can see where, um, you know, happily standing under there. It's kind of dangerous, looks to me. But, uh, and after the fact, we've got a nice uh, stabilized um, stream bank. Don't you have anything to add yet? That is our background on stream restoration and natural channel design. That's the goal of the project, basically, in a nutshell, is to achieve that stable stream channel. Um, and so now we've got a few slides just to kind of give you an idea of what's on these presentation boards. Um, I know you won't be able to read some of the details, but um, as soon as we get done with the presentation, we can get up close, look at the boards, look at your specific property if that's you know what you're interested in make sure we, we address those interests and those needs. So um, any other background on stream channel design? It's kind of a new concept, so um, the city wanted us to take some time to talk about you know, how, it, how it looks big picture. So, so now we're going to talk about each tributary. And if you can see after the fact, um, we've broken it up. Um, we've got, we call this the Western tributary. We call this the eastern tributary, and this is the main tributary. So Rock, Rock Castle Creek proper is, is down here. So it's water is flowing into Rock Castle Creek. So this is the phase one that we talked about, uh, that Aaron talked about in phase two, is flowing down that way. So in the lower tributary, um, so this is our main tributary. It's, it's primarily on city property. There are minimal private property impacts. 
Um, if you've walked back there, to me it's a really pretty area of the stream. Uh, the stream is definitely still incised. It's down cut from its original elevation. Um, but there are nice trees back there. The floodplain is nice and open. Um, so what we're planning to do is shift the stream to the left and increase our sinuosity. Uh, and sinuosity is just a, a term that talks about how much the stream meanders. So a snake is going to be more sinuous than a yardstick, for example. Um, so we want to increase our stream sinuosity uh, through this area. We're going to utilize minimal rock structures. As we said, we prefer soft armor. We prefer log, utilizing logs for step pools versus rock. Um, there are several exposed sanitary sewer lines, the main one being down there. And the Burton Creeks Sanitary Sewer Project right now is relocating some of those, but we will incorporate that relocation into our design. Um, this is the this lower tributary is, in my opinion, the best um, area for what we call ecological uplift. This is this has the best potential for um, really reconnecting our floodplain, really improving the water quality. Uh, we've got lots of room to work, uh, so it's it's a really good candidate for this natural channel design. The photos are showing you it's really not going to look good during construction. That's the upper photo. And then after construction, you could see it's, it's built with the rock structures, but um, the vegetation takes at least two growing seasons to grow in fully. So there'll be different seed mixes and native plants that will plant, but then it's going to take maintenance work for two to five years by the city in order to really get a natural looking stream. So that's the point of the photos there. The western tributary, we're showing kind of the lower end of it, and the next slide will be the upper end of it. Um, so, I want to make sure I get my bearings. We do have a. Let's point out the middle part. Mm -hmm. This is the end of middle borough, right here. This is the cul de sac. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you go back there in the woods, there's a big 42-inch metal pipe right there. And the stream, the ravine here is kind of eroded, and then below that pipe is where the main channel is. Yep, so we propose um, utilizing the cul-de-sac for construction access through here. Um, we know that this stream butts up against a lot of y'all's properties, so we're, we're really not planning on grading any of as minimally as possible uh, along that right bank looking downstream because we don't want to take any trees that we don't have to. We don't want to uh, grade any grading that we, we don't have to uh, to do this natural channel design. Uh, we do plan on removing that chain link fence because um, in spots it's undermined. In other spots it's completely fallen into the channel. And we do propose to reinstall a fence. Um, we will use this corrugated metal pipe here for construction access across the creek. Uh, and after the fact, we will go back, and that'll be the last thing we do, take that metal pipe out and then grade our stream channel uh, again. Uh, we do have an exposed sanitary sewer line here as well. So we will address that. We'll make sure that that asset is protected, because right now you can, you can go stand on it, and that's not really safe. Um, we talked about the chain link fence. Anything to add before I go to the next slide? The, uh, if you go out there in the corner of this parking lot, that's one of the most heavily eroded sections of the stream. And that's where there's uh, some trees that have fallen down into people's backyards and the fences are also being undercut. A lot of that is park parking lot runoff that's coming off here. So when you look at the finished construction in this reach, because of the, the parking lot runoff and the steep grades, uh, we are going to have more rock structures here than we would have downstream. And it's really just what it's going to take in order to deal with the, the slope as well as the urban runoff coming through there. So. And you'll see when you come up and look at the boards a little more closely, what we're proposing primarily is, is you know, rock step pools all throughout here, um, which we saw the pictures of what that looked like. And like I said, it, if you go out there, you know, you're, you're standing and then it's a 10, 15 foot drop, and then the stream kind of just, the, the channel, the gully, <laughs> it 
just kind of goes along for 20, 30 feet, and then there's another huge drop. So we're going to be softening those, those drops, probably lifting the channel, and grading back some of those banks, and installing step pools for stability. So then moving upstream, the west tributary, uh, the upper reach of it, um, if you live up here, you're probably pretty happy with your stream because the channel really isn't very degraded. Uh, a lot of the, the runoff from this parking lot is this is where we start to see those big gullies starting to form from here up, which is coming up right there. Um, the stream is relatively stable, and sometimes the best option is to not do much. Um, so we don't really propose a lot of structures here. We don't, primarily what we're, we're thinking here is just making sure that the banks are properly graded and revegetation. You know, that's going to be the cheapest option and let mother nature and vegetation take its course. So now we've got the eastern tributary. So we were, we were talking about this reach and now we're going up the eastern tributary here. Um, this is more of the same as far as big gullies. Uh, it's a little bit wider and there's a lot of riprap down there, a lot of big rocks uh, from previous construction and stability uh, um, projects. But we do have exposed sewer lines here uh, that we will protect. We, well, a big component of this is the bamboo forest. Um, we're going to uh, remove the bamboo and Revegetate with native populations, native species. Yes, sir. The question was, how do you remove the, the bamboo uh, with conviction? That's how, because it is really stubborn to remove. <laughs> and and typically, it's a, a two-year cycle of removal, a combination of um, spraying, cutting down, bulldozing, and removing the, the ex existing root mat and then the following year coming back and spraying again. Um, so it, it's, a, it's quite a process. Um, it's very challenging. You can't just remove the plants. Um, you have to remove the roots and the entire root zone because the rhizomes on the bamboo will actually reestablish themselves very, very quickly, like not even next year, like immediately. So all of the soil has to be excavated out and taken somewhere and burned and then new soil has You to can have there. it if you want. So, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Now, <laughs> yeah. Now, the problem with leaving the bamboo is if we invest money in native vegetation to make this more like an urban park kind of feel with, you know, getting rid of a lot of the invasives is the bamboo is going to outcompete it. So, you know, well, that's great news. Write that down. That's good. <laughs> check mark, check mark. But uh, it will it will really cause the project to, to be less successful because the bamboo is very aggressive and it's very difficult to get rid of once it gets established. So. Say again. Um, I don't think with the the, the time of the year matters that much, but it, the key is really getting all the soil. You know, because it will pretty much, maybe maybe in the dead of winter it kind of hibernates and you might get a, like a two-month leave of absence from the bamboo, but the minute it heats up, it's just going to shoot right back up even stronger because of, you know, that uh, establishment during the winter months. So within, within a six-month period, it doesn't matter. It's going gonna, it's gonna to aggressively reestablish itself. So, and it's, it's aggressively growing. I mean, it's different than when we first talked to the city six months ago. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's. It's, it requires constant effort. So, um, so you know, the goal, that's one piece of the invasive plan. We have another piece, which we call selective um, clearing. And what that means is when you see, like, the, the vines or the privet, the things that are sort of growing up the trees or filling up all the open space between the trees, none of that's good for native vegetation either. Uh, that's a lot of handwork. But if you have a contractor in there and you're going to build access roads, it's better to have them do that additional work to really clear things out. Um, it's almost um, unwalkable in certain areas. I mean, it, not only is it steep with the ravines, but some of the vegetation is so thick with invasives and they've really taken over. So there, there's some mechanical removal by hand methods that's just good hard work that somebody's going to have to do in order to get rid of some of that stuff. And then once it's done and the city, you know, does invest in that, 
you know, then it might require some lighter labor just to remove stuff as it starts coming back up. So it's not gone forever, but, but through a couple of growing seasons, the city's hoping to work with people and make this a nice, you know, stream corridor that has native vegetation and, uh, and is stable. So. Along the upper reach of the East Tributary, once again, that's, that's kind of up here. Um, we propose, this does run along Old Wards Road. Um, if you've been back there, there's, there's a guardrail and then a steep drop off beyond that access road. Uh, and it's just all broken up concrete and rock and it's just not, not stable at all. Um, what we propose is a 42 inch pipe with a grass swale over top of it to convey that runoff to just downstream, which is right here. And if you see, that's kind of where that picks up. And we'll have what we call energy dissipation, a scour pool to kind of slow that water down before it continues on downstream. Because what we call that excess power uh, is what erodes a lot of the, the stream bed and the banks. Yes, sir. The, how big is the pipe going to be was the question. We're proposing a 42-inch pipe. Write that down on the board. Say put a bigger pipe out there. <laughs> yeah, the pipe is, um, there's two pipes here, and then there's a retaining wall for this parking lot and a concrete channel. So we don't want to touch that because it could impact the parking lot. And, and the retaining wall, structural and tragedy. We're not gonna to touch that. So what we did is we first looked at putting in step pools here and we realized that there's really no ecological benefit to it. It's in the back of a parking lot with a rusty guardrail. So now the new plan is, that we're proposing initially at least, is remove the guardrail, put a pipe in, bury the pipe. The new grade through there is gonna look more like a grass swale next to Old Ward's Road. So you could actually, you know, have a shoulder to the road, um, got somewhere you can walk. It's not going to be a big ravine. That doesn't mean this isn't going to fill up with water. There's going to come a point if you get enough rain where this pipe is going to be full of water, it's going to overtop the pipe and it's going to run down the ditch. And then there's going to come a point if it's a really, really a lot of water where it may run down the road too. But the pipe is going to handle smaller storm events, two-year storm, five-year storm, that kind of thing, which is a design event for an engineer. We're going to put that in a pipe so that only every once in a while it overtops and it runs down Old Wars Road, get rid of the rusty guardrail, grade that out so that it is, you know, a lot nicer looking, maintainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now it's... That's what it looks like now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a 42-inch pipe, and we're going to fill up over it so that this is like 12 to 18 inches deep. So now if they go off the edge of the road, it's just into a just looks shoulder, like a grass like shoulder. A road shoulder, as opposed to being a big ravine. That's going to be a pipe. Fill right. It's going to be a swale, but call it's, a swale, it's a little 12 more inches. Like it's just a place for the pavement to run off to and then it'll run down to a graded inlet, and then that graded inlet water will drop into the 42-inch pipe. I, yeah. I think it'll be a lot safer, personally. The, uh, whatever we do there, the tractor trailers will be on Old Forge Road, this will be next to it. Whether that's paved or, or some kind of stone or some kind of grass, we could figure that out. But, but right now, it's, it's a piece of guardrail they hit. So whatever we do is going to it's going to give them a little bit of wiggle room to maneuver back there. And I, I don't know if y'all have the the auto repair place back there, but they they they're running cars in left and right. I mean, we, we took one of their spots and I felt guilty. I was like, because I mean, it's just they're just running. So, so, so there's a lot of traffic through there. So really, the rusty guardrail and the road falling off that's that's not good. It doesn't work. So this gives you more room. 
Um, you know, ultimately, we want to maintain kind of a, a swale or a ditch up against that, sh that shale slope. We really don't want to cut into that on the other side. So this is just fill. This is just fill in the ditch up, if that makes sense. Well, that will be something moving forward in the design. They'll be taking a look at that and how big that pipe needs to be. Mm -hmm. If a 42 will work or if it needs to be larger, that this is part of the design concept that we're going to be working with the engineers on and figuring out what it needs to be. And one other comment I was going to ask is that before we end the evening, if you wouldn't mind kind of pointing out where your business is and where they're pulling in, I'd like just to make sure that we document that on the map, if you don't mind. And the pipe ends right where the other pipe is, so you know where the channel that goes down and the pipe that goes under Road right there. Yeah, that's where the pipe's going to end. So, so for this pipe, this pipe, and then the big plunge pool that Joe talked about. So all that water will be going into a plunge pool for treatment, and then from there, we're going to the street project. Are you going to design some way that we can go ahead and maintain it? Yeah, it, the plan is to maintain this uh, west, uh, the east trip from Old Road. Right? Old Road Road, right so we'll, we'll use that to access. We may uh, temporarily, we're going to build a construction access road across city property to build the lower section, uh, but the plan is not to pave or gravel that. The plan is to, to reestablish that, so I don't know that we're going to actually leave an access road in that area, and we're definitely not going to have a permanent access road coming up to Middleborough through the neighborhood. If we get permission to work on those folks' property, I don't know if you're here tonight, but if we get permission, we're gonna be very careful to restore the area when we're done, remove the corrugated metal pipe and reconnect the stream, and that'll, you know, and then we're done with access from that side. So it's really just maintained from Old Wards Road, the project. So I think we've we've kind of talked about these objectives, but I was just going to do a couple of quick slides here at the end of the presentation. Um, primarily, um, the biggest benefit of this project is overall water quality. Um, they, they, the guy who served us lunch goes fly fishing in Rockcastle Creek. I mean, there's there's some really nice um, uh, floodplains and natural areas below this stretch of property. The city property, in particular, we can use a lot of. Um, natural vegetation in order to maybe draw that um, ecological uplift that Joe talked about. Um, also maybe draw some of the wildlife closer to the neighborhood. So there's some real good water quality benefits and ecology benefits that this type of project gives you versus a, a pond. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, we definitely want to do work on the native vegetation. That can be really, it's a lot of hand work. It can be very hard work, but removing all the invasives, especially the bamboo, uh, will really provide better access and better views through the property. Um, and the exposed sewer lines are a huge concern. Uh, there's a lot of work we're doing on the sewer system downstream. We just want to deal with a couple of exposed sewer lines as we go through this area too, make sure the sewer system's protected and we don't have problems later down the road. And then I say manage tree clearing and environmental impacts. We're in the process of working with the Corps of Engineers and DEQ on the Waters of the United States permit, making sure that this is permitted work and that we've got all the clearances we need to do the work in the stream. Um, we're also looking at the trees. We, we actually went out. You, did you guys see the placards on the trees? Yeah, there's a lot of trees out there. But our, our arborist has led an investigation just recently of going out looking at all, each one of those trees so that we know the sizes and the locations of them. We've surveyed all the trees. We're going to try to avoid what trees we can, but it is construction work and there are going to be a lot of trees that are going to go. Um, we'll have a plan to replace them and we'll present that at the next meeting. But that's probably the biggest impact is the construction access through here and then having to come back in and plant small trees that take a long time to grow and look like some of those trees do right now. Um, another thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, reassess those trees for tree health. Some of them are in really bad shape. So as we figure out where we need to do construction access, if we're running into a tree that's kind of past its useful life and is in the process of uh, of, of uh, not doing as well. You know, those are trees we're not as worried about, but there's some really nice trees in there too. So those are the kind of things, like Joe said, you know, if there's a tree that you really know is nice, you know, make a note of it for us tonight so that we can keep that in mind as we plan the construction access routes through here, stay off the root zones and try to protect those trees. Because a few really nice trees in and around this design are really gonna help us keep this from looking like it's been completely denuded. 
and those trees will become kind of the backbone for the new uh, conservation areas that we're going to create and grow. Um, and then, of course, private property impacts. Everybody um, that is impacted by this project directly uh, through tonight's meeting, through the next meeting, we want to make sure we know about you know every piece of fence, everything that you're concerned about, get written comments as much as possible tonight so that we can keep those things in mind as we start producing designs and make sure nobody's got negative impacts that we can avoid. Um, and if there is a negative impact, we'll make sure we're very clear about that either through the next meeting or through the folks that come and ask for easements. Because um, at some point the city is going to need at least temporary easements to get on the property and do the work, and then in some cases permanent easements in order to maintain the work like we talked about for two to five years. Um, the project schedule, um, we got started on this back in January, it feels like yesterday, and we have been walking your stream like crazy. So we're kind of done with that process. We've studied it. We feel like we understand why the stream's eroding and what we need to do to make it stable. Um, and we're presenting that initial solution tonight. Based on your comments, we're going to finalize the 30% concept, uh, make sure we're within budget with the grant money that Aaron talked about, and we're going to move into a 60% design this summer. Um, that's where we start putting more detail to it, and we start figuring out what the property impacts are going to be. Um, sometime this fall, as we're getting into a 90% or final design, uh, you'll have people uh, contacting you individually to try to get those easements and to talk to you about this project. Um, and then we'll come back together as a group once we're getting close on that to just say, you know, people are supportive or the project's changed because of individual impacts that we're trying to avoid. We'll give you an idea of what that design looks like later this year and how soon we think we can go to bidding and construction. Um, we will be out there uh, with the city um, for the rest of the design as well as during construction of the project. Um, it may very well be Joe, but if it's not, it's like one degree of separation. If you see the AMT logo on a truck, I could find the guy. So um, we're very uh, invested in this. Look forward to your questions, and I think I'm going to hand it over to Aaron to wrap things up. And I think um, Don has touched on a couple of the project's needs that we were just talking about. Again, moving forward with um, the engineering and the designing, uh, the final design of the plans, looking at the, the permit information. I know I just signed the, the permit tonight to go off to the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, and then, you know, I think easement acquisition will be something that we'll be happy to discuss with you um, individually um, at, the, at the meetings that we have, um, whatever we need to do to answer your questions, to make you feel comfortable about the project um, for any temporary or permanent um, easement that it is. Um, and the easement would only be for this project. It's for no other reason and no other purpose um, other than just be able to ensure that this project is su successful so we can come back in, assess that plant health over the next few years. And the goal of this is to be able to walk away in, in a few years and have a natural looking stream corridor that's not going to turn into what it currently is, which is an eroded mess. Um, I don't know a better way to say that. And, um, and that we'll have a better water quality at the end of the day coming off of all of the strand area down through here. Again, as we mentioned, um, we hope to be able to go out for bid um, early next year, maybe late winter, um, going into 2018 and hopefully going to construction um, maybe spring, early summer of next year. It's just a ballpark um, estimate as long as everything goes well. Um, and then again, what we've talked about tonight is that we'll move forward with the maintenance and just making sure that um, the plants are living and that we're not seeing any, any issues from, um, from construction. We'll be working with AMT throughout that process um, and getting all that done because at the end of the day, we do want to have a very successful project. Um, and be able to improve the water quality in, in Lynchburg. And hopefully, um, I know Whitney and I have talked about this in the past, um, this is something we feel very passionately about, um, really helping water quality. We have all this stormwater runoff that's leaving our roads. And sometimes it's clean, sometimes it's not, but when it hits a degraded channel like this, it doesn't do us any good in, for our community because it erodes all that sediment um, and anything downstream with it, um, that it happens to, to catch up with it when it does rain. Um, and so anything that we can do to help protect our water quality, to protect our streams, um, this is just one of the things that um, what we can do about it. And we hope to be able to do more stream restoration or outfall improvements as well throughout the city as we go to and hopefully um, begin the process of repairing some of our infrastructure as we move forward. So with that, um, we do want to hear from you. Um, we are at about 7 o'clock. 
Um, we can take as little or as much time as you like. We're in no rush whatsoever, but we understand completely if you need to leave and be somewhere else this evening. Um, I do want to thank you um, very, very much for coming out this evening. Um, and I do now just want to open it up for any further questions, um, concerns, comments. Um, we can feel free to come up and look at the boards, post-it notes, markers, whatever we need to do to be able to, to answer any questions. Yes, sir. Okay. So it's coming off the parking lot? Yeah, I've, I've got lots of pictures of um, plastic bottles and trash and debris downstream. Gotcha. Um, and that's really the result of, and that's why we're at this um, kind of, the, the reason why we have this issue that we do right now is because there ha hasn't really ever been any attention paid to it. It's kind of been out of sight, out of mind. No one has known what's been going on back through there. So we're going to try to, to fix some of that. In terms of, in terms of, If you ever see that, do you see that facial change I just had? If you ever see that, I'm going to give you my phone number. Please do not hesitate to give us a call. Um, oh, my goodness. Well, maybe this will kind of give a little bit of reprieve for the neighborhood of having to deal with, um, with any um, transients. But. And this would be up on the, the shopping center side. Well, that would be something that, you know, uh, it could be approached with the shopping center to see if that could be done. I don't know that we would be able to do that specifically with this project. But one thing with the vegetation, hopefully that as that vegetation grows up, it can give a natural kind of um, barrier in between, a visual barrier in between. It might take a few years for that to grow back up. And in terms of trash, your original comment, that is something that we are um, attempting to manage in the areas of the city, and we have some different measures. So that could be something that we could take a look at, where that trash is coming from, and um, we can see if it's coming from our, our public system. We can see about if we can do anything there to manage it, or if it's coming from private property. We can do some outreach or do uh, through this project or other means to be able to, to let them know that it's an issue as well, because trash... You know, if you, can, if you can see the trash, there's so much more in the stream that you really cannot see. Um, but please do, if you ever see somebody draining motor oil in their inlets, please give us a call. I'll make sure you have our phone number before you leave. I own where the bamboo is. You're welcome to put an airport strip in there and <laughs> <laughs> have access. Gotcha. Well, we promise not to land any, air, um, any uh, airplanes back through there. Um, but this area right, so are you, this property here? Uh -huh. Okay, gotcha. Well, uh, back in the scary. But they ground up Ward Road at the start of that grade, and if they smooth that out, they can get access to where Jerry is, I think it's still part of Ward Road back there. Gotcha. Well, that would be something that we'd be interested in talking to y'all more tonight about, if you have a minute, um, on access back through there. Because this is, and again, uh, on this map right here, we have proposed staging area. This is not an absolute. It's just proposed and some very preliminary conversations that we have. Um, but if there is an absolute issue with doing that, we want to hear that tonight. Or if there's an alternative that we can work with you on, that's fine as well. So that this, we would love to have more conversation with you on that. That's okay. That's good. <laughs> well, a couple years ago, when the prom, I spent two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars paid in property last year. I can't have the construction. I understand. Before, it, you could you couldn't hurt it, but man, it's, it's, no, that's not. A no, I understand, and that's what we need to know. We didn't know yeah, that before. I, I think they, they, they come in off the old Ward Road to my way. Oh yeah, yeah. they talk about using back. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, like exactly. I can't do it because you're all right with that staging. If we remove the bamboo staging construction in that area, that's fine. That's fine. Right here. Well, yeah, that's still right here. And you're right here. Well, What's your right 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 farm right. just over here? Oh, okay. Gotcha. I mean, you, they were my bamboo. I just can't put them on now. Well, no, that's the right location, too. No, no. We understand, Gary. We really do. Well, I don't know because I know it's a funding issue. But it takes a while to get rid of that bamboo. If somebody wants to do that in advance, I'll be all right with us. 
<laughs> and I just keep cutting it back so it's not a big deal gotcha. for me. Right. Give it away. I'm just saying if it's it, it made some sense to cut it and then didn't get six more much, it might be able to get rid of a lot of before you start. I tried to put a lot of it. We thought that as well, that if we could get rid, if we could do the phase one of the uh, elimination of the bamboo now and then the phase two while it's on the that would be great. Even project that would happen, we would Gotcha. Well, we will remember that. Um, I have a feeling that with our funding source that we have and working with them, it will have to be part of the, the, the construction process that we go through it. Um, but if something were to change, we might come and talk to you then. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get an axe. She said she would give us an axe. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And then it's a pipe. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen So we're proposing, here's here's the pipe, ultimately, and if you, if you want to come up afterwards, you can see it. We, we put existing features in a lighter color and proposed features in darker. So if you come up, you can see in a lighter color behind our proposed stream, yeah. there's, there's a, the pipe there. And we propose access crossing the stream over top of that pipe. So we don't have to um, impact the stream any more than we, than we already are. Um, and then ultimately that pipe is gonna come out and we will propose, we will regrade the, the stream channel. It's a, it's a deep gully, it's, it is a deep gully, it is a very deep gully. And you know, so often with a deep gully, what we might propose is if it looks like, like this, what we might propose is raising the stream channel, you know, so coming back here, and something like that. So. It looks to me like it's kind of straight. This doesn't look like it has a curve. This is, this is like a, if, if you cut the stream, this is a cross sectional view, so if you cut the stream in half, you're, you're looking like a, into the channel. But there's another uh, dollar that comes down. Yeah, where the two streams connect. Yes, yeah, so that's that's just part of the, the restoration effort. We will stabilize that connection because, like, as, if you can see, um, the pipe is hanging at about eye level on the downstream end, uh, where the stream used to be at eye level, and then it's slowly downcut and degraded and downcut and degraded. So now, now it's more of like a waterfall coming out of the pipe. So we would we would tie those two channels together in a stable way because yeah that's that's very unstable. Yeah. Okay. And what we would look at doing with the chain link fence, I know that's a safety issue as a mom of young boys. I know that I would be concerned with them playing too close out there. Um, so looking along that back side of the channel, we would propose at least to replace the back side of the fence line. Another not going to propose to replace all existing fence out there, but at least that back side of the fence line can be replaced and put back in. And that can be something that we talk with you individually about, um, especially I think it's mostly the residential properties um, that are concerned there, uh, and we'll be happy to talk with you individually on, on what that will look like. Yes, sir. And my primary water uh, from the stream comes up, uh, uh, comes from Edgewood uh, and uh, through a, uh, uh, a large pipe up underneath Sheffield Drive and then flows on the opposite side of Sheffield and comes behind my yard uh, at the very back end of the yard. In addition, I have water that flows from uh, Glenfield and Fenwick down that way. Now, is this the same stream we're talking about here, or is this going to be part of maybe the second uh, part of this, or? I think that's going to be the second phase, because it's, it, are you one street over from Middleborough? Is it, I'm sorry. Uh, one street <laughs> over from Middleborough, Berkshire. Yeah, this is Burke, and, so if this then, is Middleborough, this is Berkshire, and then Fenwick comes around. No, we're down here. 
your yeah, next road. Yeah, yeah, no, sir, you're not going to be affected by this property. Oh, I mean, by this project. That's right. And not even the second property. Not even if you're up here from the street, you're not going to be affected. Right, even though I'm way down in there. If, if the back line of your project butts up against the the stream, Rock Castle Creek, um, then that potentially would be the phase two of this project. But now that, that's potentially your down the road. This, this is phase one, and, and it doesn't seem like you're going to be affected by it. And you, you, you aren't wasting our time. Good question. <laughs> but we can get your address and just confirm everything for you, and we can be in touch with you on that. We'll do that. Let me make sure we, I have your name, and we'll, um, we'll get that information for you, sir. It does need it bad. It's one of the worst I've seen. And if I may say so, I, I'm really personally, as a stream restoration designer, really excited about this project as well because often um, a city or a town will propose a stream restoration project and you know they have a quarter mile of stream, but they're not treating upstream of it or downstream of it. And it's almost like putting a band-aid on it. Whereas right here, we're starting with the headwaters and then potentially moving downstream. And it's really the best way to do stream restoration because you know that's it just makes sense. Why, why start down there when all here is messed up? So I'm, I'm a big advocate of this project. This will actually be one of our second or third um, stream restoration project. We've done one small restoration project to help protect a sewer line that we had uh, severely exposed. Um, in the past year that we had, um, and then we have actually one under construction now. It's on the Harry Mott Elementary School property, and it's a drainage channel that comes down through there. Again, not as bad a ravine as this one, but still one that I may not want my kids playing in. Um, that's actually currently under construction, um, and that's some. If, if you be interested in that, we've got some good uh, drone footage actually from the contractor. He's taken some good footage of, of what that project was and is becoming out through there as well. It's been a, a very good project to, to work with the contractor on, so we were really happy with that, the way that project is going. And, um, and this is something that we hope to be able to do more stream restoration because we need to convey the stormwater. The stormwater is not going anywhere, um, no matter how much it rains. It's, we're still going to have to deal with runoff issues um, and pollution issues, and this is one of the ways that we can do that. So, any other questions? Anything else we can help you with tonight to understand the project a little bit more, address any concerns or questions? you have another meeting and then start this, or when are you going to start this? Well, we hope to have another meeting very similar to this. We'll send out another mailer um, to notify a press release and everything to, to let people know about the meeting. More than likely, we'll have it back here at this facility. Um, and we hope to have that in the fall um, before the holidays roll around. So sometime before Thanksgiving, we hope to have um, another meeting. Um, and then with that, we would hope to wrap up the design phase of things and move into bidding. So we'll have to put it out to bid for the contractors to bid on it. We hope to do that maybe in late winter, so maybe February time frame. Um, and then from there, it may take a month or two to go to construction. So we're looking at probably a springtime construction start. Um, if if all works out well, knock on wood. And then that project, I, and I believe our uh, construction time period is, um, would be through the end of calendar year 18. Hopefully it would not go into 19 um, for that to be able to get, be completed. Um, knock on wood. Yes, ma'am, this is not gonna start tomorrow by any, by any means. <laughs> so. Tell the truck drivers good luck for a little while longer. Hopefully we can improve the, the area. But please, let's take a moment, stretch our legs to um, look at the boards. We would love to get some specific feedback from you folks um, on your areas, whether you're a resident or a business owner out in the area. Please, um, please make sure we've answered your questions this evening. <laughs> 